Welcome to Philotti Maths. Fighting problems one step at a time. Welcome to Philotti Maths. In this video, we're going to see how to complete the square. Tricky one, we'll make it easy though. This first example, they've asked us to write x squared plus 4x in the form x plus p squared plus q. Now, this is exactly what we call completing the square. Now, let's have a look at how we do it. Step one, locate the number in front of x. That number here is four. So that is the coefficient of x. The first thing we do is we take this number and divide it by two. So I'll go ahead and write that down here. So four divided by two, well, that's simply two. Okay, step one completed. Let's move on to step two. Now, step two involves taking x and adding the number we just found. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add two. And now we square this expression. So we take x plus two squared. So let's recap so far, we've got the coefficient of x, which we've divided by two. And the second step was to add two to x and square that. Now the third and final step, we subtract this number inside the brackets squared. So we subtract the two, which is inside the brackets, but squared. Okay, that's pretty much it. All we need to do is simplify this expression two squared. Well, we know that two squared is simply four, so we can rewrite this expression. It will be x plus two squared minus four. And this is simply the answer here. Now, if you were able to expand the bracket here by uh, squaring x plus two and then subtracting four, you would easily see that that leads well, that gives you x squared plus 4x. I'll go ahead and do that right here, and then I'll put it in fast forward so you can just quickly verify that that's correct. Okay, so in this second example, we have been asked to write x squared minus 8x in the form x plus p squared plus q, which basically means to complete the square. Okay, so step one involves spotting the number in front of x, which in this case is, careful, minus eight, and dividing that number by two. So we'll go ahead and write down minus eight, which is the number in front of x, and we're gonna go ahead and divide it by two. So minus eight divided by two. Well, we know that eight divided by two is four, so minus eight divided by two must be minus four. So we've got the number written down now. So let's move on to the second step. Now the second step, as we said, involves x and then adding this number next to it. x plus minus four is simply the same as x minus four. So we can go ahead and write down x minus four. And now remember we need to square this expression. Okay, excellent, step two is completed. Now the third and final step here is to subtract the number we've got inside brackets, but squared. So in this case, we have to subtract this number squared. So we can go ahead and write down minus four squared. Now, notice that if you had used brackets instead and you had said that you're subtracting minus four squared, well, this would lead to exactly the same result because a number squared simply becomes positive. So we ignore this step. We never really write down the number as a negative here with brackets because we'd like to save time. We simply subtract four squared. Okay, so finally, let's go ahead and simplify this expression a little bit more. We've got four squared here. We know that four squared is four times four, which gives us 16. So we're gonna go ahead and copy the first part, which is x minus four squared, and the second part becomes minus 16, because four squared is 16. The final answer here is x minus four squared minus 16. Now I'll go ahead and show you why this is actually equal to x squared minus x and I'll do that in fast forward so you can see quickly and move on to the next example. So in this third example we have been asked to write x squared plus 10x plus 2 in the form x plus p squared plus q. Therefore we need to complete the square again but here notice we've got this added 2 in the end so a constant Let's see how that changes the method. So step one stays the same. Step one involves spotting the number in front of x, which in this case is 10, and dividing it by two. So let's go ahead and write that down. So we've got 10, and we need to divide 10 by two. 
Well, 10 divided by 2 is simply 5. So step 1 is complete. Let's move on to step 2. Step 2 involves taking x, adding this number next to it, so we've got x plus 5, and then squaring this expression. So step 2 is completed. Let's move on to step 3. As we've seen before, step 3 involves subtracting the number we've got inside the brackets, so 5, squared. So step 3 is completed. But notice here we've got this plus 2. So how does the method change in this case? Well, it's quite simple really. All we have to do is to simply add this 2 in the end. So we'll just go ahead and write down plus 2. And that's it. So let's go ahead and simplify this expression and see what it looks like after we do that. So firstly, we'll go ahead and write down x plus 5 squared. So let's go ahead and write down x plus 5 squared. The second step is we have to subtract 5 squared. Well, 5 squared means 5 times 5. And 5 times 5 simply equals 25. So therefore, we've got minus 25. And then finally, we've got to write down plus 2 here. Now we've got a final step, and that involves calculating what minus 25 plus 2 is. Well, we know that minus 25 plus 2 equals minus 23. Therefore, we can go ahead and rewrite this expression as x plus 5 squared minus 23. And this is the final answer. So we've got x plus 5 squared minus 23. Now, once again, I'll go ahead and demonstrate why this is equal to x squared plus 10x plus 2 in fast forward. Okay, so in this example, they've asked us to write x squared minus 16x plus 80 in the form x plus p squared plus q. Therefore, once again, we have to complete the square. Okay, so step one, as always, we have to find the number in front of x, which in this case is minus 16. And what we have to do is divide that number by 2. So we've got minus 16 divided by 2. Well, we know that 16 divided by 2 is equal to 8. Therefore, minus 16 divided by 2 is equal to minus 8. And that concludes our step 1. So step 2 is to write down x and then add this number to x. Now remember, x plus minus 8 is the same as x minus 8. Okay, now we need to square this expression. And that is step 2 completed. Now let's move on to step 3. Step 3 involves subtracting the number inside we've got inside the brackets, but squared. So in this case, we have to subtract 8 squared. Now once again, remember minus 8 squared and 8 squared would be the same, so we just tend to say minus whatever that number is squared without the extra minus. And this concludes step 3. And let's move on to the final step. Notice in this case we've got plus 80 in the end, so we have to go ahead and rewrite this plus 80 in the end. And this basically concludes our method. All we have to do now is simplify this expression by working out what 8 squared is and then subtracting that from 80. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so the first thing we do here is we just go ahead and copy this x minus 8 squared because it simply remains unchanged. So once we've done that, we move on to the next bit, which is we see this minus, we'll simply copy it. And now we have to work out what 8 squared is. Well, 8 squared is simply 8 times 8, which is 64. So we can go ahead and write down 64 here. And then we can just copy this plus 80, which we've got in the end. Okay, now all we've got left to do is to work out this minus 64 plus 80, see what that gives us and write it down. So first things first, let's go ahead and copy this x minus 8 squared, which remains unchanged. And now let's go ahead and work out what minus 64 plus 80 is. Well, minus 64 plus 80 is the same as saying 80 minus 64, which is simply positive 16. So we're going to go ahead and say that all we have to do is add 16 here. So the final answer here is x minus 8 squared plus 16. And once again, I'll very quickly show you why that is equal to x squared minus 16x plus 80. So in this final example, we've got the hardest case up until now. 
2x squared plus 12x plus 25 needs to be written in the form p brackets x plus q squared plus r. Well, this form looks slightly different, but it still means completing the square. And secondly, why is this so tricky? Well, you see this number in front of x squared, well, this complicates things. So let's have a look at it. Step one, the first thing we need to do is factorize this expression by using this number which is in front of x squared. So this number two is gonna show us what we need to factorize this first part of the expression, what common factor we need to use for this first part of the expression. So we need to bring out two as a common factor to factorize this expression right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So notice how both 2 and 12 are divisible by 2. So we can simply go ahead and rewrite this expression down as 2 and then open a pair of brackets and then inside the brackets we'll have the following. Well, 2 times what gives you 2x squared? Well, that's simply x squared because 2 times x squared gives you 2x squared. Now, the next thing we do is we copy the plus and finally we've got 2 times something gives us 12x. Well, that something clearly is 6x because 2 times 6 gives us 12 and 2 times 6x gives us 12x. Okay, uh, lastly for this step we've got to copy this plus 25 which we have in the end. So we've got plus 25. Okay, now notice inside the brackets x squared plus 6x is an expression for which we know how to complete the square and we'll go ahead and do that just now. So let's go ahead and ignore everything else. Imagine all you have right here is x squared plus 6x. So how do you complete the square here? It would be to find the number in front of x, which is 6 in this case, and go ahead and divide that by 2. So dividing that by 2 gives you 3, because half of 6 is 3. OK, so the next step will involve writing x, and then adding this number which you just found, so adding 3, and then squaring that expression. Okay, and the next step, like we've discussed before, is to subtract that number squared. So it would be to subtract 3 squared. Okay, lovely. So that's how you complete the square for x squared plus 6x. But what do you do if you have a 2 in front of it and a plus 25 in the end? Well, you just go ahead and write that down. So you've got a 2 in front of this expression, but 2 needs to be multiplied with this entire expression right here. So what we do is we use a pair of square brackets to show that 2 gets multiplied with this entire expression. And lastly, we have to go ahead and just copy the plus 25 in the end. Okay, now let's go ahead and simplify this expression as much as we can. Let's start inside the square brackets. So notice that inside the square brackets you've got a minus 3 squared. Well, we know that 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is simply 9. So we'll go ahead and rewrite this entire expression. So we've got two square brackets, brackets x plus 3 squared minus, like we said, 3 squared is 9. So we'll go ahead and replace it with 9. Close the square brackets and write down the plus 25 in the end. Okay, now we're almost there, but we've got a couple of steps left. Firstly, we want to get rid of these square brackets if possible. So notice you've got 2 times this entire expression inside the square brackets. So 2 needs to be multiplied with the first term, but it also needs to be multiplied with the second term right here. So let's see what that gives us. So firstly, we get 2 times the pair of brackets, which simply gives us 2 brackets x plus 3 squared. Now, the next term we get is 2 times minus 9, which is minus 18. And then finally, we've got this plus 25 in the end. So we'll go ahead and write it down. Okay, we've got one final step left, I promise. And that is to work out what minus 18 plus 25 is. Okay, so minus 18 plus 25, we know is simply equal to 7. So we can rewrite this expression as 2 brackets x plus 3 squared. And then simply add 7, because minus 18 plus 25 is equal to 7. So this is our final answer right here. We've got 2 brackets x plus 3 squared plus 7. Now I'll show you exactly why this is equal to 2x squared plus 12x plus 25, but I'll do that in fast forward mode.
So this was a short lesson on completing the square. I hope you enjoyed the session and you are going to make the most of it by completing the square any way you find it. Good luck. Have you suffered from a maths related injury in the last four months? You're in the right channel. Welcome to Philoti Maths. Welcome to Philoti Maths. And let's try that one again. Welcome to Philoti Maths. In this video, we're going to talk about <laughs> this form is simply completing the square. So basically, rewriting this expression in this format will basically mean you've completed the square. <laughs> so once again, we've been asked to complete the square. Okay, so let's go ahead. Oh, sorry, I'm allergic to maths. Right, let's try again. This must all sound Greek to you. Okay, so basically, you can go. <laughs> so eight squared is eight times eight, and we know that eight times eight is sixty-four. So we can go ahead and rewrite. I'm not going to rewrite it, we're going to write it. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? Okay, let's do it again. This one's all good. Okay. 